Now, my friend, by the way, his father that was coming to pick him up, you guys might have heard of him. His name's John Strong. <laughs> yeah, some of, you, some of you recognize the name. Happens to be the senior pastor of this church. So his son, Nathan, is who I'm talking about. And so as I'm walking to my car, Nathan calls me over, says, Mark, why don't you come over here? And I, I remember thinking distinctly as I walked over, what does a shallow, arrogant guy want to say to me? He couldn't have anything to say to me. And as I get over there, he says, Mark, my father has just preached a sermon on envy this last week. This is 17 years ago now. And I, the sermon got to me. And I realized that I have been harboring envy towards you. Because you're the president of the key club. And you're the president of the Bible club. And I'm vice president in both of those. And I just wanted to say I'm sorry. You could imagine how crestfallen my face was at that moment where I realized immediately what a complete fool, an idiot I have been. Obviously, this man was a man of God. A holier Christian than myself. And immediately, I, 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 you know, I almost started crying. I said, uh, yeah, me too. Been, been envying you a little bit. <laughs> Especially the pianos and the girls are coming around. You play that piano. And so a friendship was born that day, a friendship that has lasted 17 years. And I can only hope that 17 years later, now preaching a sermon on envy, that maybe someone here might go home today. And you might say to someone that you wish you had a better relationship with, you know, I just want to apologize. I've been envying you. And maybe you find out they've been envying you. But... If you apologize to someone for harboring envy against them, I can guarantee you one thing. You're going to break down a lot of walls. And that might be you this morning. Here's a diagnostic check to see if envy is creeping into your life. Do you get upset when others succeed around you? Obviously, I was. I was very upset. Nathan played that piano so well. Do you belittle the accomplishments or the appearances of others? Your friend just got that, that new blonde highlights in her hair, and you secretly you tell your friends, it looks ugly, don't you think so? <laughs> but inside, you wish you had the courage to do blonde highlights, but you, you, you just never have. <laughs> and secretly, you are envying her. Are you tempted to badmouth a person to whom you feel inferior? Are you secretly pleased when a friend or a coworker or a family member suffers a setback? If so, you might be caught in the sin of envy. Envy is one of the silliest of the seven deadly sins. It's it's really kind of a ludicrous thing. It shouldn't even exist. It's can you imagine if I'm Norwegian. I can't grow a beard. Can you imagine if everyone that grew a beard, I couldn't be friends with them because I, I was just, I was so, I'm so envious of bearded people. <laughs> it's an absolutely ridiculous notion. Get away from me. You have a beard. <laughs> imagine if I harbored envy against every person that had a beard. What a, what a ridiculous thing that would be. My life would go into shambles simply because I kept asking, why them, God? Why did you put hair on their chin and not me. This is what envy does. It asks the question, why them? Why them? Why them? Instead, what I should do with bearded people is celebrate God's goodness to them. Oh, you have a beautiful beard, my friend. <laughs> I celebrate God's goodness to you. You have a healthy, robust amount of hair on your chin. But have you ever noticed how hard it is to celebrate with others? The scripture commands us to rejoice with those who rejoice. Isn't that hard? It's a lot harder to, mor to, to rejoice with those who rejoice than to mourn with those who mourn. Oh, you got that new, uh, new minivan. Yeah, I rejoice with you. Yeah. <laughs> what an answer to prayer. <laughs> oh, you just, you, the, you, just, you just closed on the house. You're moving in next week. Well, that's terrific. Um, yeah, God's really been good to you. I rejoice. 
you might be harboring envy. Because it is much harder to rejoice with those who rejoice than it is to mourn with those who mourn. Isn't it? It is. I want to make a distinction between envy and jealousy. Envy is pain at another's success. It's always evil. Envy is when you don't have something and someone else does and you want it for yourself. Jealousy is when you already possess something and you're afraid of losing it. This can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. For example, you've heard of the phrase a jealous lover. Typically what we mean by that is uh, a couple that's not married and typically the male that's jealous of whenever his girlfriend talks to any male. That's a jealous lover. That's a bad thing, really bad thing. On the other hand, uh, the Old Testament talks about God as a jealous lover. God is jealous of our love. And the reason for this, and the reason it's a good thing, is because the Christian faith is not about rules or principles. It's much more relationship, isn't it, than a religion. And over and over again, the Bible uses the language of marriage between us and God. So that when we put anything, out, that when we love anything more than God in our lives, we have committed spiritual adultery and God gets very jealous. Which is a strangely wonderful way of saying that God loves us a lot and doesn't want us running around with any other gods. So there's a difference between envy and jealousy. Envy, you don't have something that you want. Jealousy, you already possess it and you're afraid of losing it. Here's a brief little history of envy. If you're curious about what does the Bible itself have to say about envy, the very first two brothers in human history, Cain and Abel, right? Abel, Cain, had those two sacrifices. Abel's was a little bit better. And what did Cain say? Why him, God? Why did you like his little prayer better than my little prayer? And Genesis 4 says, Cain, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to master you, but you need to master it. And Cain didn't. He let envy master him, and he slew his brother. Or what about Rachel envying Leah? Leah had 13 kids. Rachel was barren. And instead of loving her sister and saying, I'm an aunt 13 times over, Rachel gave Leah the old stank eye. You know the old stank eye. It's the evil eye. I don't have any kids. You have all those. How come you can't, how come I can't have six? And the Bible says Rachel envied Leah. Or Joseph's brothers envied his coat. People have coats, but they wanted his coat. And so the Bible says out of envy, they sold him into slavery. Envy is ridiculous. Why him, God? Why does Joseph get that coat of many colors? Why not me? Think of Saul, his envy of David that drove him to literally to madness. You remember the Jerusalem women came up with this song. Oh, Saul, you've slain your thousands, but David is ten thousands. And Saul was driven to madness. No, no one can be a better warrior than me. And secretly having David come to the castle. Oh, come to dinner, David. Yes, that'll be nice. Here's my spear. And envy driving him to want to kill David over and over again. Or think of the pastors and theologians who killed our Lord. Matthew, uh, Mark 15.10 says, out of envy. And I said pastor and theologian instead of Pharisees and chief priests. Because that's, that's who they were. Think of the difference between John the Baptist and the Pharisees. John the Baptist, some of the disciples of Jesus were John the Baptist's disciples. Jesus shows up on the scene. Disciples leave John the Baptist's ministry to go follow Jesus. John the Baptist could say, wait a second, I just lost disciples here. I don't like this new rabbi. This is what the Pharisees did. You know, they had whatever. They had 500 people in their little Shabbat service on Friday night, but the following week there's only two. What's going on here? They got together with other rabbis. What's going on with this new Jesus guy stealing all of our, all of our people? Let's kill him. Envy. It, it's a horrible, corrosive thing. Here are some of the ways that envy works in our lives. 
the war tactics, if you will, to reduce the honor of the one envied. And then the number one way to do it is to ostracize. Because envy, the interesting thing about envy is we're not envious of the people that are not in our vicinity, in our sphere of influence. Bono can sing and he can play. He's the leader of the greatest rock band ever. I'm not envious of Bono. He has millions of dollars, but he's not in my sphere of influence. I'm not envious of the president, but I am envious of someone in my own flock of friends who can play that piano way better than me. And all those girls go over there. Or someone who could play baseball and his average is higher than my average. That really gets to me. Or that someone got an A in the class and I got an A minus. And all I 